clear the danger this time and find Bennett. Now Barrick. He's got some room to work in here. He's delivered the cross early. Palmer. Bennett pulling out to the right. Now is the defender. And Bennett gets a cross in. Haas! the feelings of a cup tie and really even more immediacy Middlesbrough have to win there are no replays for them and Wednesday after that terrible disappointment here against West Ham will want to get their act back together very quickly They've still got Norwich City to come here of course this is Davenport for Middlesbrough and Dean Barrick who's probably had more first team games than he would have expected the latter half of the season where he's back there helping out and kept his hand away from the ball too Darren Wood's long pass and it's skipped on to the goalkeeper away from Witten and every time the ball gets close to goal there's a real roar of hope from the Hillsborough fans, but no joy for them this time. Slaven's header, propped up. The whistle is gone, and Benny Slaven knew that. But Mark Proctor wanting particularly to do well against the club he left. Sheffield Wednesday, Kerr half blocked it, on the bounce has skipped through to David Hurst, he rather sliced it across goal, it's still in play with Dean Barrick, Hurst again, Barrick going hunting the ball once more, and here's Harper, Palmer, good pressure now from Sheffield Wednesday, Attempt by Palmer to get round the back. And Middlesbrough looking for a way forward now. Owen. Kerr. Davenport has stolen a yard on Pearson. Covering in the centre. And he might need to here. The goalkeeper got a hand to it. And Mark Burke his disappointment it was perhaps a little bit more than half a chance set up by Davenport who got the better of Pearson Chris Turner stuck out an arm there and if Burke could have threaded it in by the near post it would have been joy for Middlesbrough but at the other end David Hurst had an opening here and in wanting to use his left foot rather than his right he lost the chance Trying to get to his feet, uh, Slaven was weaving past him. Moen. Down from Davenport, Slaven. Davenport on the outside. And it was a tame finish. I believe really that Peter Davenport played a major part in with that first header. That's the tension in the shooting. It was scuffed wide. admired by other first division managers and Bennett now and attract him through the centre Sheffield Wednesday have a corner Harper chugging across to take it what a difference a goal would make through the back from Hurst volley and Middlesbrough rode their luck then David Hurst doing a lot of work outside the penalty area Bennett Palmer Middlesbrough 
must have thought they'd cleared the danger here, but David Hurst really connected, and a body fell in the way. It was Peter Davenport. have got to open the game out a draw is no good to them Slaven who scored so many spectacular goals this season so too has Hamilton not this time Harry Hamilton taking it on the volley Squeezing the pass away to Witten, and he in turn. It's Palmer breaking through the centre, and he became the filling in the sandwich, but there's no penalty. Not even an indirect free kick. To the relief of Middlesbrough and the frustration of Sheffield Wednesday. Here's Harper. Bennett. It was an awful work for Hurst, but the control was superb. Oh, and it nearly beamed in inside that far post, uh, appealing for a corner Sheffield Wednesday, and they've got it. And David Hurst with the original cross shot here. Paul pushed it out, and Kernigan couldn't prevent it from crossing the line. Wednesday bearing down on the cop end again. Missed his header out. Palmer. And Proctor. One of the players that the club have let go against Carlton Palmer, one of the Ron Atkinson signings. A duel that produces another corner to Sheffield Wednesday. So many years in the wilderness. They nearly dropped into the fourth division, remember. They're proud of their first division status back again. And they don't want to lose it of season decline still nil nil we're coming to the halfway mark in the second half Barrett with another corner and this time it's Kernigan who gets to it for Middlesbrough well, there's not a room to swing a cat in that near post area with Wednesday having this succession of set plays here a little deeper this time it's a corner again. Again the left foot, again it's swerving in and it's Witten! A crucial goal for Sheffield Wednesday. Delight mixed with relief for the Wednesday fans. This is a terrible moment for Middlesbrough. Kernigan. Back for Hamilton. Whitman and Barrett try and prevent the cross, and they've done just that. And there is the final whistle. Middlesbrough are relegated, but Sheffield Wednesday can celebrate. It had all dropped into place for Ron Atkinson. But there was nothing flash about Saturday, it was pure relief. Borough's loyal followers knew they had nothing to jeer. The players, meanwhile, left to learn their fate in the dressing room. But it had been sealed at Luton, and by the most dubious of penalties. A stand-in referee from nearby Cambridge spotted a Norwich foul here, but no one knew where. Danny Wilson had missed one penalty already, but not that one. And the message to Borough was loud and clear. Back at Hillsborough, the players were devastated. Back at Hillsborough, the players were devastated, most of them beyond words. They left it to the man who'd inspired their highs to express their low. Sometimes things happen to people that they don't want them to happen to them, and, uh, or to a club, or to a company, or, or to whoever. And, uh, and for us today, it's very sad. And, uh, but we'll have to get over that. I mean, everybody has to get over it. And uh, uh, the summer will give the players a chance to heal and to come back. Uh, in July, in readiness for next season, and 
uh, will be competitive next season and hopefully have a good season next year. Months ago, Middlesbrough took to the streets to salute the rebuilding of its football heritage. Bruce Rioch and his brave young men had written a great soccer success story, from bankruptcy to the first division in two seasons. It took Borough four games to win their first three points, but the spirited teamwork that had been their hallmark was still sweeping the club forward, and in style too. The fans came rolling along in droves. Those that took to the road were rewarded at Coventry by a Bernie Slaven hat-trick as good as the first division has seen all season. Slaven's instinctive finishing had survived from third to first. His 18-goal total was to confirm him as one of the great bargain buys at £30,000. At the end of October, impressive Millwall was swept aside in another goal bonanza. A 4-2 win took Borough to eighth from the table. The first division was impressed. We have a style about our play uh, and the way in which we want our players to play. The main aim for us is obviously to stay uh, in the first division. I think that has to be the target, the goal for the team, for the club. Because if we can, if we do that, then we can build uh, upon that base. Seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Peter Davenport had arrived in Riot's boldest move yet, but it was a dozen games before the expensive striker found the net. The goals weren't flowing so easily now, underlining Riot's mid-term caution. But still, the fans had no real thoughts of the drop. Even cup defeat by Grimsby was soon forgotten when Mark Burke rounded off an emphatic win at Southampton with a brilliant goal. No one could have imagined it would be 12 games before Borough won again. Yet that display at bottom club West Ham looked to have been enough. Slaven again turned the game around single-handed with two in the last five minutes. It was the sort of display that makes a season, especially as Borough were to draw the next three games to make it five without defeat. Against struggling Aston Villa though, Davenport's goal should have guaranteed survival. The rest, we know. When we were leading 1-0 with seconds to go, and that game we should have won. Uh, long periods where they were on top, but when, we're, when you're ahead 1-0 with seconds to go, you want to clear the game up and uh, go home with three points. And those two extra points, I believe, would have kept us in the first division. I mean, when I first came here, the average gate was about six, and then it increased to 10, 15. I think this year, the secretary said, we're, we're 12 people short of 20,000. I think they'll stay with us because they've been very good to us, very patient. They'll miss this year the trips to Old Trafford, and, or next year the trips to Old Trafford and, and Anfield and Goodison. Looking for some luck. They had the moments of pressure, but Wednesday just threw players in the way. Even Tony Mowbray, the very heartbeat of the team, couldn't do it for them this time. Getting to the cross was one thing. Nor could Bernie Slaven find something. When Borough produced some delightful touches right at the end, it just wouldn't fall for him.